And if you've been following the news recently, you may have read that Texas State University will be offering a class on Harry Styles this fall. A class, a class on Harry Styles, the singer. Well, things like this, they always, well, they get me to thinking, you know, I'm getting older and sometimes I look around and I don't even recognize the world I'm living in anymore. Things are changing every day and not always for the better. And it's times like these that I like to take a moment to talk about how things were, well, just a bit more simple <laughs> back in my day. Back in my day, universities weren't offering classes on Harry Styles poppycock. Back in my day, if you wanted to take a class on Harry Styles, you had to accidentally call One Direction, One Dimension in front of your niece. And then, by God, she would give you an education. Back in my day, meteoroids weren't damaging the new James Webb Space Telescope star junk. Back in my day, the only telescope being damaged was the one in my living room when my neighborhood, Mr. Landingham, came over and smashed it into a million pieces and called me a pervert. <laughs> well, sir, I wasn't the one going to bed in a full Spider-Man costume. <gasps> yeah, good point, Rusty. He could have closed the curtains. <laughs> he wanted me to watch. <laughs> also, back in my day, we weren't looking at space photos from some brand new James Webb telescope. No, back then we had to rely on that old piece of crap, the Hubble. Every few months that hunk of junk would out another stupid photo and we'd have to pretend to see something because the scientists told us it was amazing. Show us some orange smudge and say, this is a new galaxy, isn't it incredible? Meanwhile, we're all thinking, are you sure it's not a family photo my aunt took with her thumb over the lens? Hubble. <laughs> Back in my day, we weren't prepping ourselves for the Game of Thrones spin-off House of the Dragon, Lannister Beans. Back in my day, we were prepping ourselves for the Cheers spin-off, and boy, were we excited when we found out it revolved around everyone's seventh favorite Cheers character, Fraser Crane. <laughs> What's more fun than a bar in Boston? Oh, I know. A talk radio station in America's wet blanket, Seattle. <laughs> but you know what? It kind of worked. Thanks to a fine actor named John Mahoney. <gasps> oh, you thought it was Eddie the dog. Yeah, he was great. So was Roz. And who can forget Daphne Moon and Niles. Niles. You know, come to think of it, Frasier might have been the seventh best character on Frasier, too. <laughs> what are the odds? Back in my day, Walgreens employees weren't refusing to sell condoms on religious grounds. Back in my day, Walgreens employees refused to sell us anything. Because they were all out back having a smoke and there was nobody running the cash register, nobody anywhere. You could wander the aisles for days and never see a single person who worked there. Even the woman with the name tag trying to force open the razor case was like, me? No, I work at Target. I just couldn't find anybody who worked here to get me a damn shit hydro. Back in my day, the crypto markets weren't crashing. No, back then, the only thing crashing was your cousin on your couch, because he lost his house investing in crypto. <laughs> back in my day, there was nobody testing positive for polio in the United States. The only thing we were testing positive for was polio, the string cheese. <laughs> and you know what the big difference was between polio and polio? FDR never had string cheese. I told you that one would do all right. <laughs> Back in my day, Long Island residents weren't worried about getting attacked by sharks. They were worried about getting attacked by fellow Long Islanders, <laughs> especially by angry five foot four inch bald men in sub shops wearing hockey jerseys that came down to their knees. And no, they didn't have to pay for that Bud Light because actually they didn't take it from the fridge. They brought it in with them, actually. And if you say another word, pal, they will break that bottle over your head. <laughs> Back in my day, the Fed wasn't increasing interest rates. 
or maybe they were Christ. I have absolutely no idea what any of it means. <laughs> Whatever, Rusty, what do you know about uncollateralized transfers between depository institutions? <laughs> oh, really? Well, in that case, I, I better call my accountant. <laughs> 10%? You're killing me, Rusty. Back in my day, no one was yammering about inflation unless it was Thanksgiving and you were watching the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. I remember one year we couldn't talk. Stop, excuse me, we couldn't stop talking about inflation at our house because they inflated Uncle Sam and Spider-Man at the same time and the way they were positioned, well, just take a look. <laughs> I guess that year Uncle Sam really had something to be thankful for. Back in my day, they weren't making a musical sequel to the movie Joker. Back in my day, we were satisfied with the music in the original Joker. Like, remember that scene where those three Wall Street guys sang Send in the Clowns before getting murdered? Gotta say, best scene in that movie. Am I just saying that because my writer, Ben Warheit, who is also the writer in charge of the Back in My Day script, played one of the three Wall Street guys that got killed? No. Not a chance, although come to think of it, that was probably the best part of that movie. And actually, and this isn't even part of the back in my day script anymore. This is just me <laughs> riffing, thinking out loud, but wouldn't it be kind of cool if they recast all the people who died in the first movie as different roles in the sequel? It could make sense because the whole thing with Joker is that he's insane and you don't know if what he's experiencing is real or in his head, it would be a cool, unique casting move for a great director like Todd Phillips. The Academy loves stuff like that, too. Again, just thinking out loud here, make it happen, internet. <laughs> Are you happy with that, Ben? Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> hey, how's it going, Rusty? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry I had to do that, but sometimes this. Grumpy old Gus has got to get the gripe, and this has been back in my day. We'll be right back.